Why do we have things? We have things like candy, cars, clothes, and toys. Thanks to the mass production of goods by the billions for the billions, these products are shipped worldwide to provide to every demand on our planet. But how do these goods get received by the billions of people on Earth? That is because of the mass production in assembly lines and factories. But how did these factories get their start? Let's go back to the early 1600s, when the Industrial Revolution modernized the world, providing access to goods anywhere. Factories and assembly lines rose to the top after the competitive industry in pottery that caused for the mechanization in industry that led to the industry of cotton in places like America and India. While other countries struggled with the cotton and wool industries, China found its wealth in pottery. China's pottery used a unique clay that created a more desirable flavor and spread around the world with China being the sole manufacturer and therefore sole economic beneficiary. Naturally, the rest of the world looked for ways to compete in this market by looking for a cheaper, faster way to produce pottery. The answer comes from an Englishman named Josiah Wedgwood. Wedgwood's solution included the new ideas of using people with a short, simple and specific job instead of craftsmen. He also used molds rather than potting wheels. The benefit of this was that he could lower wages and hire less skilled workers. Wedgwood was able to save a remarkable amount of money as well as time. This was the beginning of the assembly line. The mechanicalization of industry can be directly linked to the increasing use of steam engine in mechanics. The steam engine powered thousands of revolutionary inventions such as the water pump, tractors, trains, and many other machines. Coal was the primary fuel source for these new steam engines, so as the use of steam engines increased, the demand of coal increased. To supply the world with coal, coal mines rose across Britain, Scotland, and Pennsylvania. This labor required the work of the miners, who worked in very dangerous and grueling work. One account was from Betty Harry's journal. I got a bell around my waist and a chain passing through my legs, and I go on hands and feet. The road is very steep, and we have to hold on by a rope. And when there ain't no rope, by anything we can catch a hold of, there are six women and about six boys and girls in the pit I work in. It's very hard work for a woman. Although steam engines were large important in the creation of new machines, the system of interchangeable parts also caused great change. Interchangeable parts were perfected by Eli Whitney in the early 1800s. Before interchangeable parts, machines and machine parts were made custom. So if one of these custom machines had issues, it'd be, it was sent to an expert for repair, which proved to be very expensive. One industry that was able to use new machines and inventions to grow a substantial amount was the textile industry. Mechanization in the Industrial Revolution had a profound and drastic effect on the cotton industry. In the 1750s and before wool was the main source of cloth for clothing, most people could not afford cotton because it was quite expensive and time consuming to make almost 500 hours to make one pound of cotton before the Industrial Revolution. Since 95% of the population was relatively poor, this meant that very few people could afford cotton. As a result, cotton was not a very profitable industry and did not have a strong intellectual foundation, but things would soon change. In 1764, James Hargraves invented the spinning jenny. This was a device that allowed people to string 10 strands of cotton at once. This allowed one step of the cotton making process to become much faster. 
Later that decade, in 1769, Samuel Ockwright invented the water frame. This was a loom that ran on water. The loom is a device that weaves the strands of cotton into cloth. So with a watered power loom, workers could make cloth much faster and more efficiently and allowed for an even bigger boom in the cotton industry. In 1785, the mule and the power loom were invented. The mule was a mix of the spinning jenny and the water frame. This allowed the two steps to go together and cut a large amount of time off. The power loom made the same year was similar to the water frame except it ran on steam. Cotton could now be produced in 8 hours, 63 times faster than it had been before the mechanization.